What's up, YouTube? For tonight's video, we have a full Wigger Stu Stealth Rock Pokemon team. Oh man, this one was difficult. Basically, the opponent could set up Stealth Rocks, right? Since it's a very common entry hazard in the any battles. And my whole team would just get melted, right? It was very difficult. However, I did get a handful of battles that were good, and I thought I'd put them up for you. Anyways, if you have an entry hazard that you think is really cool, like a fire stealth rock or an ice stealth rock, put it below in the comment section. I'd like to hear your uh, little thoughts on that one. Any theme teams, any feedback on the video. If you like these guys, please leave a like. It does help out my videos a lot. Let's get to this one. So we have a Lunatone lead. What the? It feels like I've got something climbing on my hair. Is it a spider? It's, it's alright guys, it's Australia, it's fine. This, you know what, I'm going to leave the spider crawling through my hair just for you people. That's that's how tough I am. Let's get into this one. So I'm going to get the Scummy Silver Wind boost. Well, I was hoping to, but it never happened. Lunatone, instead of using a rock type move, then again, it's not like a good swap or anything because my entire team was weak to it. I mean, I'm going to go down to like a pebble at this point. So it's going to put me to sleep with Hypnosis and it lands, by the way. I'm running a special sweeping Ledian set, Silver Wind, Giga Drain, Air Slash, and Focus Miss with the Hophidium Z and the Swarm Ability. However, I've got Tim and H on this to outspeed things. And I wake up the first turn. Guys, Hacker Exposed, Swarm, Early Bird, Ledian. Anyway, so going for another Silver Wind boost. Unfortunately, I don't get it. Does pretty good damage. Dream Meat is going to fail because I am now awake because I got Swarm and Early Bird. Anyway, so going for another Silver Wind. Hopefully taking it out with a crit, but Lunatone hangs on there and it's going to be able to take me out with the Psychic. So, not the greatest star in the world, but, uh, you know, I, I got around that. Uh, it's quite, it was quite funny because I had the Swarm ability, but I woke up like the early bird ability uh, would normally do. If you don't know what early bird ability does, it wakes you up um, like one less turn of sleep. So you get put to sleep and then you wake up the next turn. So it's quite handy. Anyway, so bringing in the god himself, uh, finishing off with the shadow sneak. Now this should intercept. I've used a lot. Um, this is the Endure Weakness Policy Set. Home Claws, Shadow Sneak, and guys, I put Leech Life on it because you know, since I've got so much health, I've got to get that health back, right? So go for the Endure here, trying to get a uh, super effective move to land against me. That's great. It's going to be Air Slash from the opposing Ladian too. Good to see Ladian being used. So I Endure the hit, obviously, and I'm going to get a Weakness Policy boost. However, even though I've got a Weakness Policy and a Stab, and I'm going to go first, Shadow Sneak isn't the, you know, the strongest move out there. So I was expecting to get some good damage, but not take it out. So almost takes it out. So I was fairly happy with that result, right? There wasn't much I could do. Um, I only had Leech Life as my other move. Um, Home Claws was also handy there. In case you predict a swap, right, you can go for the Home Claws, and then you could go for an incoming uh, threat. So go for the Endure, so you get, almost get a plus three, plus an accuracy boost. Pretty good, right? Anyway, so we have let in. Uh, this thing is still a bit of a threat. Motham dodges that Air Slash and goes for the Acrobatics. This is a physical Motham set. Um, let me go over this one. This was a Psych Up Swagger set. I've got Lunge and Acrobatics on this. Jolly Nature, Max Attack, Max Speed, Tinted Lens, and Citrus Berry. So Citrus Berry there is just a tanker hit, I guess. Why you get the swagger up? They hit themselves in confusion. You psych up their attack boost, and then you get a power boost from the citrus berry uh, being used in acrobatics. So going from 55 times two, lunge to get some health back. Works rather nicely. Anyway, so bringing in Vespaquin, uh, Persia's going to take me out with the retaliate. So that's a little bit of a problem. Now this was a little bit more standard set that I normally run on Vespi, but I really needed this on my team. So I've got Power Gem, which was an absolute must on this team, just for any fire types. Um, any, just anything like that. For fire types, absolutely wreck my team beside one Pokemon. All right, anyway, so I've got Power Gem, Bug Buzz, Air Slash, and Sludge Bomb with the Unnerve ability, Modest Nature, Max Health, uh, Max Special Attack with the Choice Specs. It lived on like, I was going to say it lived on like one health, but it didn't. Sure, it's coming soon. Anyway, so it's going to get a Toxic against my Vespi. I did think it would actually live, uh, but it did. Um, so that was a, a, a modest, mug, like, modest Bug Buzz. So that was... That's pretty tanky. Anyway, so going for another Bug Buzz on the Gothitelle, that's going to be enough to take it out. So that's not too bad. I just took the Toxic. I didn't really want that to happen, but that's fine. Um, beggars can't be choosers. So now we have the Persian left and two other Pokemon, so it's a fairly even battle at the moment. So now we have the Persian coming back in. So this thing's obviously just going to keep coming back in using Retaliate Boost on me. However, my best weekend is fairly bulky, but it just lived on 15 health, which is really good for me. I'm able to get a Bug Buzz Choice Specs off on it. And it lives on like, I'm just going to say one health. And it lives on like one health. It was probably like, I, I say it's about five or six. Anyway, so Vespigan's going to go down to the Toxic. It was actually very important to live that and was able to get that attack off, right? Because now uh, Persian is in range to finish off. So I've got my Charizard here. This is a uh, special defense boosting Charizard. I've got uh, Roost, Toxic, Sky Drop, and Fire Spin. I've used this guy before. It's pretty good. Um, so it's, it's boosting my special defense and health. So max health, max special defense. 
Uh, you can either drop speed or attack, uh, or you can drop speed, uh, just drop, I don't know. It's the thing is you've got sky drop, so you want to do like some damage with that. And you've got fire spin as well, so you want to do some damage with that. It's up to you which one you'd want to drop there, but you could just drop speed because speed is not totally important on this set. Anyway, so we have Grumpy coming in. I've got the Toxic up on that, which is good. So the idea is to get the Toxic up on the opponent, track them in with fire spin, and then start using sky drop uh, while you're in the sky with them. You, you, once you've grabbed a uh, you know, Porky Pig in the sky, it's going to be uh, losing health from the uh, Toxic and the fire spin, and you're going to do damage with sky drop, and you're going to be unaffected affected uh, for one turn so it's it's a nice little strategy i've made many and many of these sets that work very nicely anyways uh so grumpig is i think it's trapped in after this fire spin it's all, i know that it's had thick fat but the idea is to sort of you know trap it in anyway so going for the sky drop on the grumpig taking it into the air we've got guys if only pigs would fly in real life Anyway, so that's doing a little bit of damage with the Toxic and with the Fire Spin as well. So Grumpy is pretty much buggered. It cannot do anything to me. I'm bulky as well in Special Defense. Grumpy normally runs special, uh, like a special attacking set as well. So now it's going to get free from the uh, Sky Drop. It's going to go for the Psychic. Sometimes it can carry Psy Shot, which would have done a little bit more than Psychic. However, it gets a Special Defense Drop. So that's kind of annoying. So that means I'm going to have to probably swap. There was one other Pokemon I really didn't want to reveal to the end either. However, I'll get to that in a second. So the Grumpig is going to go down very, very soon to the Toxic and the Fire Spin combo. Now, the good thing about Sky Drop is you can actually still be in the air, right? So the opponent can come in. So I was thinking, the Persian's going to try and go for the Retaliate, right? So if I go for the Sky Drop here, I can bring the pig into the air, right? So it's in the air. It's going to faint in the air. Now, the Retaliate from the, uh, from the Persian, right, isn't going to work because it's going to go first. I'm in the air. So it's not going to get that boost from the KO. So that's perfect. That's what I was going for. So the Grumpy is down to the Toxic, which is nice. So, um, so the Taunt is going to wear off, which is cool. Now, it was really good that I was able to get my strategy off with all that Taunt hit too. So uh, the Persian is going to come in. However, the Persian is going to swap out, right? Because there's nothing to do. I'm still in the air. So now the last Pokemon is the, that the wasn't revealed already, was the uh, Volbeat. Now I'm going to go for Sky Drop. Sky Drop obviously fails because I didn't, like, I don't have, I'm not holding a Pokemon anymore. It'd be nice if you just hit them, like, with, like, Fly or something. That'd be, I don't know, maybe that's a little bit too overpowered. Anyway, so uh, it's going to go for the Thunder Wave on my Charizard. Now I can go for a Bounce and a Fire Spin. That'll be enough to take it out. Even with, uh, you know, even with no investment either. However, I'm going to get paralyzed. So, you know, I, I did see that one coming. So I've got leftovers on this set, which makes it nice and bulky too. I've also got Blaze ability on this one too. If you get low, you can do a little bit more damage with Fire Spin. I thought that'd help. Anyways, so the Volbeat is going to go for the Tail Glow. That's going to boost its special attack drastically, so it's going to plus three. I'm going to get paralyzed again. So if you remember, I already do have a negative in special defense too. I know that it's main stab, like it's bugs, not going to do much, but if it does like have a hidden power, like rock or something, I'm down. However, it obviously doesn't have any of those things. It's going to go for the bug buzz. It still does hardly anything, and that was a critical hit too, so that was, that was beautiful. So go for the fire spin here, and it's going to land pretty hard on the blueberry. I actually don't mind the shiny evolve it. So it, it actually looks like it's got like a little blue toilet seat around it. Anyway, so I can go for the bounce next turn. That'll be enough to take it out. Um, I don't, I was trying to get around the Persian you know, coming back in with a Retaliate. I do have one more Pokemon left, so I thought, I've, I've got to make this, I've got to get this in the right amount of health. Right. Anyway, so I'm going to get uh, hit by the Volbeat again by the Bug Buzz. I get paralyzed. At, is that like the third, third time? I think, I, yeah, the third time I get paralyzed. Wait, I need a drink of water. All these Parrot Hacks people. Anyway, so the Fire Spin's still doing pretty good damage to the Volbeat. I've got to take this out with Charizard, right? Because it's got, you know, it resists its main stab and it's already got like a, uh, it's already got plus three in special attack. So I've got to get rid of it. All right, so I've got Roost on this one too. That was an option. However, I just wanted to take this thing out. So going for the Sky Drop on the Volby, getting a little bit more recovery in leftovers, which is cool. And uh, that's taking a little bit more damage from the uh, Fire Spin too. So now I'm going to go for the Sky Drop on the Volby, and uh, that's going to uh, be enough to take it out. So that's good. So the last Pokemon we already know is the Persian. So I know that's going to go for Retaliate, right? Um, I'm not bulky, overly bulky in defense. I've taken a lot of hits from Volbeat already, so this is perfect. It's like, okay, I can definitely sack Charizard here. That's cool. My last Pokemon should be able to deal with this unless I get really, really unlucky. So anyway, it's going to obviously go for the Retaliate. I don't want to swap Zard out because it's not overly bulky anyway in defense, and uh, that is down. So the last Pokemon I've got on my team is uh, actually all the way from third gen. It's Delibird. Now, this Delibird set is pretty cool. It's got... 
It's mainly a counter set, but it's got some offense still. I've got Jolly Nature on this. I've got Max Attack, Max Speed. I've got Counter, Ice Punch, Drill Peck, and Avalanche. So I've also got Avalanche works very, very nicely with Counter because you can make it look like you're a slow Deli Bird, but then you can, you know, you can bust out an Ice Punch or a Drill Peck really quickly. So I'm going to counter the uh, Persian, and that is going down, and that is the game. Hope you guys enjoyed this first battle. Let's get on to the second one. It was so funny, like, uh, a lot of times, it's the amount of damage that uh, that Hustle Deli Bird did with Avalanche. Damn, it, it's really, really strong. Anyway, so we have a Rotom Fan League, which is actually really good against this team. Um, a lot of, as you say, a lot of my Pokemon, like, look at this, like Deli Bird, flying, Ledian flying, Vespergood flying, Charizard flying, Mothman flying, rip. Anyway, so I'm going to go for the Swagger on the Rotom Fan. So I, I got to get rid of this thing. It's it, it's super effective against five of my Pokemon. It's going to go for a Charge Beam. So this this is a problem. So it's going to one-shot me with Charge Beam. Oh, dear. I was hoping to get a Psych up. Unfortunately, that didn't happen. And it's going to get a Special Attack Ray. So I'm in trouble. I'm in deep trouble. So I was thinking, I could swap in Delibird here and go for the Avalanche. That'll do a lot of damage to it. Like, it'll get a boost from going second and from Hustle too. Now, I was like, all it needs to do is hit itself in confusion, but it doesn't. It gets through us. So I was like, yes, this is really good. It's going to land an air slash against me. I was kind of hoping it would go for the charge beam uh, because I may not get flinched. And I do get flinched. I'm like, oh, that's a game changer. So that really, really sucks. However, they're going to swap out their Rotom fan and go into the Gastrodon. So I think I went for the Ice Punch here. Uh, maybe they thought I'd, I'd outspeed them or something like that, which I, I was going. If it was an offensive set, I wouldn't have. But if it was a uh, bulky set, I would have. So I'm not sure that. Anyway, so going for multiple Ice Punches, hoping we're just going to freeze it. But I didn't. And it's going to take me out with the Muddy Water. So I got some good hits against Gastron, but I think it would have done its best work against Rotom if I got the Avalanche out. That would have been really good. You could also um, interchange Ice Punch with... Uh, no, you can't because it's coming. Not with count, not if you're carrying Counter, but if you weren't run running Counter and Avalanche, you could run that Ice Punch and Ice Shard combo, which most uh, Deli Bird actually do. So, bringing in, uh, bringing the Vespergun here. Now, I could have gone for Giga Drain, but I didn't really want to reveal I had that already, so I just went for Bug Buzz, right? So, Gastron is down. I, I'm pretty sure that uh, that crit didn't matter. So, now we have Behemoth. An interesting swap in here, because Specs, uh, Bug Buzz is going to do a lot of damage to Behemoth, and it's obviously going to get outsped. However, they're going to do a double swap and go back into Rotom Fan again. So, it's like, okay, at least I've got some damage against it. That's not too bad, right? And I get a critical hit, so it's like, that's really good, that's that's nice, that's, that's going to turn like a possible 6 hit KO into probably like a, uh, a maybe a 4 hit KO, but I don't want to stay in that situation anyway, so swapping in my Zard, this is my bulkiest Pokemon, uh, apart from Shedinja, I was a little bit worried to swap that into. It was a good thing that I didn't because I would have got wrecked by that Shadow Ball. I think they were actually predicting me to swap into that. Anyway, so I'm bulky in special defense. All I need to do is get a Toxic against this thing and just survive, really. So I go for Toxic. It doesn't miss, thank goodness. Um, I've landed that one. So I know I can leave probably two Charge Beams. And if I, since I'm out Speedy, I can probably get the Fire Spin combo going and maybe get a little bit of damage on now it's going to go for the Air Slash. Uh, that's not going to do much to me at all. So that's fine. I'm gonna, As I said, I'm going to out speeding that so they cannot get that flinch chance. So that's cool. Um, Charge Beam also has a, a low chance of missing too. Well, when I use it, it always does. So Charizard is uh, going pretty good at the moment. I can go for the Fire Spin or the Sky Drop. Decide to go for Fire Spin for uh, damage, and uh, that's pretty good. Now uh, the Rotom is going to go for the Shadow Ball this time. Maybe trying to get a Special Revenge Drop. I'm not too sure. Um, the Charge Beam wouldn't have been enough to take me out of that range, but it would have done like a lot of damage to me. I'd say that would have put me in low red. Anyways, so I'm going to take that one really easy. So Rotom is going to go down this turn. I'm going to, I could go for Fire Spin again, or I could go for Sky Drop, or I could go for the Roost, right? That was my option. So Rotom's going to go down the next turn, regardless of what I do. I decided to go for Roost. Like, let's go for Roost. That's my, that's my best possible option to go for that. So Roosting up with my Charizard. Now they're going to go for the Charge Beam this turn. And I avoid it. So I was like, that's really good. I was hoping that was going to happen earlier on, but they didn't use it all the way to the end. Anyway, so Rotom's down. That's a big threat out the way. Man, that was scary. Like, all of my Pokemon except Shed Actually, no, Shedinja could get hit by it too. And it's not like I could use anything against it. So now we have Behemoth coming in. I'm going for the Toxic against this thing in case it's a stalling set. Um, I, I know some of them can get Recover and Cosmic Power, so I just thought it'd be best to put a Toxic on that. Now it's going to go for the Psychic. Since I'm running Special Defensive, I'm going to take that one reasonably well. Now this has big Special uh, special Attack with Analytic, so it's going to be about a 3-hit KO with the Leftovers. However, if there's a critical hit, that could be a problem. So I don't really want to lose my Charizard at this point in the game here. It was, it was, a lot of the time it was the MVP on my team. So, uh, Behemoth's going to swap out, and now we have... 
the Zangoose coming in. So it's like, okay. I went for the Sky Drop to get some damage against the uh, Behemoth. So I'm going to lift Zangoose in the air. So I was like, okay, I wonder if I've got like a Toxic Orb or anything like that. I'll be able to see. Um, it's not going to have that because I'm going to go for the Sky Drop first. And that's going to do some damage against it, which is cool. So now the, uh, the Zangoose is going to go for a fling here, which is really annoying because it's going to poison my Charizard. I get some leftover recovery. So Zangoose is obviously going to be able to outspeed me. I'm going to swap out my Charizard. I think I said they got they had fling earlier on. So I went into Ginger thing to go for a physical uh, physical normal type move. It went for fling, right? And it's going to fling its Toxic Orb and uh, since it's got immunity, right? So you wouldn't be able to see that item because it's got, it's like a, obviously with immunity, if you don't know, you cannot be poisoned. So it was hidden from the other person. That's why I swapped in my Ginger. However, it went rip. So swapping in Lydia now, so I thought, well, I may as well waste no time and let's go for the Z Focus Blast. Um, this one, the whole thing about this set was, if I go for the Focus Miss Z move right, I cannot miss. That's the main thing I wanted to go for. And it wasn't, I mean, it was, it was kind of powerful on Lady. Its special attack was okay. That's about it. But really a lot of time I was trying to go for a Silver Wind, but I didn't think in this matchup I had much of a, uh, you know, I didn't have much of a choice to set up or anything because my defense was garbage and I wanted to take this Pokemon out. So Zangoose is going to go down to, into like a smoking crater and uh, we've got three Pokemon down on each side. So a pretty uh, reasonably close battle at the moment. So now uh, we have the Charmander coming in. So like, okay, this is cool. There's a Charmander and a Charizard. I went for Air Slash trying to go for that uh, Air Slash Scummy Boost. I knew the Charmander would have some sort of Focus Sash or Everlight or something. It, it definitely wasn't going to be a one-shotter. I was like, let's get the flinch, like, you know, they got in the uh, early on the game, but that didn't happen. It's going to go for an outrage. That does about half health to my lead in. Now, lead in is going to go for the silver win. I was hoping to get a boost here because um, there's only one health left on it anyway. And uh, that Charmander is going to go down, but I didn't get the boost. That's kind of sucks, but that's all good. So the last two Pokemon were the Trevenant and the Behemoth. So the best I could possibly do here was to try and get that Silver Wind boost or go for the Air Slash. It's going to frisk out my item. They already knew what I had anyway, so that's fine. So going for the Air Slash, hoping I get a Scummy Flinch on it. It does over half health, which is really nice. However, it's going to have Rock Side. So I was like, oh God, Rock Side is super effective against my entire team. So this is a really, really big problem. So I've got Charizard, who's definitely going to go down to Rock Side. And I've got my Vesper gun left, which was... It was going to be very tight whether I was going to be able to lift that or even outspeed this. I wasn't sure. So I've got Unnerved. So if it has any berries or anything, that's going to be very handy. It's going to be outspeed me. So now it's going to go for the Rock Slide. It lands on my Vespergun. Vespergun lands on lives on 25 health. It's like so... I was so thankful for that. I don't get flinch or anything. And I'm going to get the Air Slash off, which is going to get rid of Trevenant quite easily there with the Super Effective and the Choice Specs. So nice. Now the last Pokemon we've got is the Behemoth. So since I'm locked into Air Slash, I'm not going to be able to take this one out in uh, one move. I could swap in Charizard, but then I, you know, there was a point where I you know, I could get critted, so that's bad. Went for the Air Slash, does about half health, and I finally get a flinch there at the end of the battle. Where I don't think it probably really mattered too much. Uh, but anyway, I, had, I still had my Charizard, which could have gone for a Roost and then solved this thing out. But it was a good game. I hope you guys enjoyed both of these battles. These Stealth Rock battles are really, really difficult. If you've got any like really cool hard strategies, please leave them below in the comment section and uh, enjoy the bloopers.